Okay, in this um, section, I'm going to talk about the levelized cost of electricity. And basically what it is, is it's a way of um, comparing electricity generation costs, um, uh, uh, but in kind of um, comparative way, because obviously there's lots of costs associated with generating electricity. And this way of kind of um, allowing a, or attempting to allow a direct comparison. And the way it does that is it compares, um, it considers basically a cradle uh, to grave cost. So, um, you know, the kind of the definition used by um, Department for Business Energy and Industrial Strategy is this. The levelized cost of electricity generation is a discounted uh, lifetime cost of ownership and the use of a generation asset converted into an equivalent unit of cost of generation. And it's normally expressed in pounds per megawatt hours. So, what does that mean? Kind of, uh, in in other words, it's the the ratio of the total cost of a, a generic plant, you know, be it coal, gas, nuclear, etc., including all the capital and operating costs. And we we'll talk about that in the next in a in another lecture, um, talking about life cycle costs. So it's the ratio of all these costs to the amount of electricity. Um, expect that it's expected to generate over the plant's lifetime okay and all these costs are, um, are used in this um, um, uh, calculation are what are called the net present value or NPV so it's the cost um, there would be in today's terms I'm not going to go into that now um, that's in um, another one of my lecture and engineering economics so go and look at that if um, to find out about that OK, but so as I say, what it basically is, it's a way of comparing different power generation technologies by taking considering the total cost and the total amount of power that that plant is going to generate. OK, so we talked to what is it for um, different technologies? We talked about um, all these different technologies um, in this session. And um, so here's a comparison. So I've got the levelized cost of electricity and um you know, you can see that according to this, you know, onshore wind is one of the lowest, um, which is you know, perhaps counterintuitive to, to some of you. Uh, it was to me, actually. Um, and you can see that, you know, for the combined cycle gas turbine, it's relatively low. But obviously, when you combine it with um, carbon capture and storage, which we've been talking about uh, in our environment um, lecture, then obviously the cost goes up because you've got extra plant um uh, associated with that and which adds an additional cost so some of the other things I've put in here just as kind of um, uh, to, to consider because it's not just the cost that you want to consider when you're looking at um, balancing an energy mix um, you know on a countrywide scale and um, the other things you want to consider is um, for example the predictability so you know how how much can I rely on my source of it? You know, is it going to be there all the time? The flexibility, so can I shut it off if I need to? Um, you know, if I'm generating too much, I have the flexibility to turn it down. Um, the lifespan, I need to know, um, obviously, how long I'm going to have that energy available source for. And also the um, typical capacity. Okay. And I kind of talk about these generally. Um, so in terms of predictability... Um, you can see that obviously all the ones that rely on wind and solar, you have to say they're moderate. You can't um, rely on them um, in a meaningful way. Whereas um, for your uh, fossil fuels and your nuclear fuels, you can. They, they are very predictable. You can, um, as long as you've got the fuel available, you can put it in and burn it and get power out. And also even the tidal lagoon, that's very high predictability because... Um, we can predict the, the tides very accurate, accurately as well. In terms of the flexibility, though, um, it's vice versa for some of them. So, although the tidal lagoon is very predictable, it's not very flexible because obviously we can only, um, you know, because we, we rely on the, the tides, we can only um, change, you know, um, alter the amount of the um, electricity that we're generating by a little bit so we can move it obviously because um, you know you don't always have to release your all the water back out at low tide you could you know let it go a little bit before a little bit after but you can't release it at high tide because there wouldn't be that head there so you do have some flexibility but not that much 
obviously with all the um, wind and solar, the flexibility is, you know, very low because you're just at the mercy of um, uh, the elements for that one. Whereas the coal and um, gas, um, the flexibility is high because you can you can uh, turn the plant down by putting in less fuel. Um, kind of the other one here is nuclear. That's relatively low flexibility because um, uh, of the way that it operates. You don't really want to be kind of slowing the reaction down and speeding it up. So that's not particularly flexible in the way that it operates. In terms of the lifespan, um, you can see that um, you know a lot of the uh, power plants have quite long um, lifespans, typically kind of 40 years. It's kind of more the renewable ones, kind of 20 or 30 years. So that needs to be taken into account when you're looking at your energy mix. Um, and also in terms of your typical capacity, and this is quite interesting because um, you look at it, for example, onshore um, wind um, uh, turbine. That's around two megawatts per unit, whereas you look at a nuclear power station, it's chucking out uh, one gigawatt. So you need, you know, 500 of these, 500 wind turbines for one uh, nuclear power station. So you know, those sorts of things have to um, be brought into mind in terms of the infrastructure and the association costs and the amount of electricity that you have to generate to keep the lights on on all the homes in the UK. So, you know, which way um, do we go? I mean, we've got all these decisions about lifespans, flexibility, predictability, capacity, um, cost, etc., etc. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, perfectly valid question with um, lots of different answers. Um, so the answer is we don't really know. But um, the UK does have a commitment to reduce its um, emissions by 2050. We've um, talked about that in another lecture and there's a really good online tool which I urge you to go and have a, a go with so if you go to this um, website here um, basically what it does is it gives you the target to reduce your um, carbon dioxide um, to, to the 80 percent target um, by 2050 and basically you can do it by changing um, different electricity and energy production um, you know you can click on various things and look at the consequences of it and it's quite a good tool to to get you to think about how um, electricity is produced and the ways that we might be able to uh, reduce it in the future. Okay, so that concludes this uh, lecture on power generation. Um, if you have any comments or queries, then let me know. And um, thanks for listening.